I've been an EV driver for the last three years. I had a Tesla Model 3, but I did lease that because I knew in the next few years the technology would get better and I would probably want to try something different. And well, those three years came up. So I was in the market for my next car. Now, spoiler alert, I didn't end up getting another Tesla or even a Rivian like this video might suggest or any EV at all. That's a totally different video that I will be talking about. But in the time of my search, I was lucky enough to be able to experience the Rivian R1T for about a week and really in depth. If you didn't know, for my day job, I work for the JFL Network, which has a bunch of YouTube channels and other projects. But for the John Rettinger channel, we did a full video on the R1T. And there was a lot that went into it. It's almost half an hour long. And I even made a little bit of a cameo there. So be sure to go check it out. But I was able to spearhead that project and that meant I spent spent a ton of time with the truck, both driving it and filming it. So I know it pretty much inside and out and I have some thoughts and I'm not gonna cover every single detail of the truck. There are plenty of those out on the internet. In fact, you should watch the one that I already talked about down below in the description. But there are certain parts of this truck that stood out so much that I think it's best in class. So here's why, even though I didn't buy the Rivian R1T right now, there's a very good chance that one of these will be in my driveway in the future. So a week is not the longest time to have a vehicle like this, especially when it's so new, but it was enough time to basically experience every portion of it. And overall, the first impressions were that this did not feel like a truck from a brand new company. It felt very polished, very secure, well-built, everything you would hope for from a car in this price point, it accomplished very well. Now it wasn't perfect. There were some body gap alignment issues that were very minor, but definitely there. And there were some other issues that are clearly there just because the truck is brand new and will probably get fixed as time goes on. And I'll talk about those in a little bit. But overall, I was more impressed with this truck than I thought I was going to be. And during this week, like I said, we did everything you could do with a truck like this. So that meant driving it on road, going on a kind of mini road trip, taking it off road and experiencing what that looked like, which is really what I'm interested in. And no matter what we threw at it, it absolutely excelled. And it really did feel like the perfect truck for really anyone. Even if you don't care about having a pickup truck, like you could easily drive this car. Now for me, the reason why I want this truck is because of the adventure mindset. Rivian as a company very much has a brand identity and I think it comes through really well. Rivian is a company that wants you to get out there and explore using their products and go find the road less traveled. And I think they accomplish that very well. And for me, that's something I really resonate with. If you watch my videos, you know that I love going outdoors, we go camping, we go exploring, and we love going off road and exploring those roads less traveled. We just can't really do them in an EV because those cars just didn't exist yet. So when Rivian finally released the R1T, I was excited. I was pretty much determined that this would be a car that I would be getting. It just depended how good all these features were and if they really lived up to the hype. And let me just say they did. So there are really three things that I care about when looking at a truck like this. Obviously it's an EV and it's a truck. So that is already in its own category, but there's really three important things. And for me, it's the capability. How is it on road? Cause let's be real, even though it's an adventure vehicle, most of the time is gonna be on the road. But then when you do wanna go off road, is it gonna perform well there? The second is the range of the truck and charging the truck. And the third for me is just general ecosystem. Like should you buy a Rivian product, even though they are so new? When you get in this truck and you floor the accelerator, you're gonna be going zero to 60 in about three seconds. That is a lot for a truck that weighs 7,000 pounds. Now, I, I've heard before, you know, why do you need to go that fast? How often are you really accelerating? And I will say, it's true. Like, are you really doing drag races all the time in your truck? No, you're not. But I will say it solves probably, well, maybe not the biggest, but a really big issue with big cars like this, whether it's an SUV or a truck, typically they're just not very fast. They're slow. And yeah, you're not launching off the line all the time, but it's more so when you're in traffic or when you need to pass someone on the highway. Having that power that you could just unlock whenever you need to and not worry about whether you have like a mile of runway because you're just not gonna be able to get up to speed, not worrying about those things and just using the power on tap all the time is really nice. Especially for me, spoiler alert, the car I ended up getting to replace my Model 3 instead of this or any other EV is a Lexus GX460. And while I love it for the purpose I got it for, which more videos on that coming soon, it's not a fast car at all. It's actually very slow, very sluggish. And if I had the ability to accelerate when I needed to in a car of that size, 
I would enjoy that. And that's something that the R1T gives you. And on the other hand, if you do want to have a spirited drive up in the canyons, you kind of have that sports car element inside of the truck. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. And from a performance perspective, I mean, it really works well. And if you don't want to drive fast, you're just driving normally. Well, this is a very comfortable place to be. The cabin is very well laid out, very comfortable, has plenty of space, both in the front and back, although I will say the back seats aren't as big as I thought they would be. That's definitely gonna be better in the R1S, the SUV version, but that's really all I can say. It's an enjoyable experience no matter what you're doing while on the road. Now, when you take it off-road, this is where things kind of uh, can go good or bad. On-road driving dynamics and off-road driving dynamics are completely different. You want different things from your vehicle, and it's oftentimes hard to put them both in one. So if you had like a truck that you wanted to make off-road capable, you could you know, upgrade the suspension, you'd get new wheels, and that would make it really capable off-road, but that also might mean that your on-road comfort is you know, sacrificed because the suspension is tuned for off-road rather than on-road. Things like that often happen, so having them both in one truck is not the easiest thing to do. But the R1T straddles that line extremely well. And I think one of my favorite things about the truck altogether is the suspension. So in the infotainment screen, you get all your adjustments for the different drive modes. You have your auto mode, which figures it all for you. You have your conserve mode, which is for getting the best range. You have a sport mode for the best throttle response and suspension settings. And you have your off-road mode, which inside of it has different settings for things like rock crawling. But in each one of these settings that you choose, the suspension adjusts dynamically depending on what you are doing. And it does that not only with the damping, but also in the ride height. So for instance, when I'm on a road on a highway trip and I wanna get the best range, hit it in conserve mode, it drops down the suspension so there's less aerodynamic friction and it's more slippery through the air and it turns off two of the motors so that I get the best range possible. But when I wanna go off-road, let's say there's a bunch of rocks and obstacles, I hit into the off-road mode, it now can go up to 15 inches of ground clearance, which is a ton for a stock vehicle. And the shocks are now tuned so it has more give depending on what you are doing. But the best way I experienced this is with washboard roads. Washboard roads are very common when you go off-road. And basically there's little ridges that occur over time in the road and when you drive over them, you feel every single one of them. They're very bumpy, very loud, very annoying. And when you put this truck into off-road mode from standard mode, you instantly feel how much more responsive and supple it is. It soaks up the bumps like really nothing I've ever felt. But that's what's so impressive about this, is that you can do that off-road and then you can instantly hit a button, go back on-road, and now you're in sport mode with a stiff suspension that can take you around corners. It's just the best of all worlds. And speaking of off-road, this is what I was personally most interested in because if I was going to get a truck like this, I want to use it as its intended purpose, which is for adventures. And I have to say that the truck performed extremely well. I'm not someone who's gonna be going on like the Rubicon Trail with a fully built Jeep or anything like that. I basically want to get to locations that most people can't get to and that you need a car that is capable of getting you there. And that's why I got the GX460. I'm building it out right now to be that truck. But out of the box, the Rivian R1T easily does all of that. This is the launch edition, so that means it has four motors, one on each wheel, and that is very impressive to feel in real life. Basically, each wheel can independently be controlled instead of having to use your differential or anything like that. It's all just built into the motors themselves. So really, if one wheel starts to slip, it instantly can change what it's doing to try and find grip rather than have to redirect power throughout the system. And in our tests, when we were going off-road, we went up some very steep inclines. We went over ledges. We actually bottomed out once, even though there's 15 inches of ground clearance, but we bottomed out and the truck didn't even notice, it just kept going. And when we went up obstacles and over rocks, there was no hesitation whatsoever. Now this wasn't our truck, so I didn't want to push it too hard, couldn't break it. But I wanted to find trails that I felt most people, especially ones that bought this truck, would actually do. And the trails we did were rated moderate, so definitely doable, but you need high ground clearance, you need four wheel drive, all the things that you need in an off-road vehicle. But all of that stuff is necessary to do it, and the Rivian R1T passed it with flat colors. Now, performance is excellent, but as an EV, there were some worries that I had. Of course, in day-to-day -day driving, having an EV is really nice, especially if you have a plug at home. If you are able to plug in your car and charge overnight wherever you live, this is like the reason to have an EV. It makes the experience so, so good. And that's no different with Rivian. There is quite a big battery pack inside and you get around 300 miles of range with that full charge. 
But where I was concerned was when you go to these different locations, when you want to do your adventures. Obviously, Rivian is advertising this to do that, so are you going to have enough charge to get yourself there and get back? And that continues to just be the question and is really impossible to answer because it really depends where you are going. So for instance, where I live here in Utah, the infrastructure is not very good for EVs. There are plenty of chargers around, but they're all either level two or 50 or 60 kilowatt max. That's as fast as they get. The closest 150 kilowatt charger for me is about 30 miles away in either direction. I can either go north or south, but it's about 30 miles. And that's just in the city. If I wanna go actually explore Moab, for instance, a very popular Utah location, the charging situation in Moab is dismal. You either have to find a place to stay that you can charge overnight, or you have to plug in and just wait for your charge. So that means you have to think about it while you're adventuring. Driving to Moab means I'm going to be using energy and I'm gonna get there with a low state of charge. I'm gonna to have to wait for it to fill up. I'm gonna to have to go do my adventure and then wait for it to fill up again when I get back. And that's just the state of the EV market right now, especially when you're in more remote location. If you're in the city, perfectly fine. You're gonna make it work, no problem, especially for road trips and things. I'm not worried about that. It's more just the locations that you're going. And again, this is going to vary wildly depending on where you go, but it's just not the same experience as a gas vehicle. When you're going off-road in a gas vehicle, you can pack extra fuel with you. You can even do an extended fuel tank. There are ways around not having as much range as you want, but you just can't do that in an EV yet. So really this aspect is just going to take time and you're just gonna to have to be aware of what you're using the truck for. I still don't think it's the best overall adventure vehicle specifically because of the range and the range anxiety, which in this case is actually real. But eventually I can see it getting better, especially once Rivian rolls out their adventure network. Hopefully that comes sooner than later. But as for now, it's not the perfect adventure vehicle because it's an EV, but the EV aspects are still there and they're still overall good. The utility of this truck, I think, is the main selling point. The performance is great, having that in an EV is great, but the fact that you can do so much with everything built in is very nice. If you've heard of the R1T, of course you've heard of the gear tunnel, which I think is a great feature, and I'm really surprised no other truck has tried that before. But it really is useful, and you can store a lot more in there than you might think. And eventually we should get things like the camp kitchen, which if you're off-road camping, that's going to be great. You have the crossbars, which not really anything new there. You can get those on any car, but nice to have. You also have the frunk, which is powered and really big. I like that a lot. You have the camp speaker, which I don't listen to music that often, but it is a nice thing to have. And the fact that it's built into the truck and you can just use it whenever it's always charged up, that's very nice. And then the back, you have a four and a half foot bed with a powered tonneau cover and a spare tire compartment that you can use for either spare or for really any other storage that you like. And there's just a ton of storage and compartments packed into this truck, which are all very useful. But I will say one of my favorite features is the built-in air compressor. Now you can use this for really anything you want. It's just a typical air compressor, but when you're going off road, airing down your tires is very important. This not only gives you a more comfortable ride because it's more squishy and goes over bumps better, but you're also less likely to puncture a tire and it gives you more grip when you're going over surfaces. So it's very important to let some air out of your tires when you go off road. But that also means that you have to pump them back up when you get back on road. Otherwise you're gonna have excessive wear. It's just not smart. And usually you have to bring your own compressor. I have one that I use when I go off road and it works fine, but I have to plug it into the battery. I have to manually check with a gauge what the pressure is and make sure it's at the right amount. But with this compressor, you just select what PSI you want, connect it to the tire, hit start, and it just does it for you. You don't even have to think about it and then you just move to the next wheel. And that is just such a nice little feature that again, you don't have to just use it for this, but it's really nice to have. With my line of work, I've been lucky to test many different vehicles. A lot of the EVs on the market, a lot of internal combustion vehicles on the market. But this R1T is the one that left me the most impressed. Now it wasn't perfect. There were things that I would like to change. The first one is just the software experience. It is improving very quickly. Even since we got to test the truck, it has already had multiple software updates that have fixed a lot of the issues with the software. But things like the infotainment being in a weird spot, the clock being a little small, not having very many customization options, just the little things in the interface are not my favorite and I wish would be 
changed. And like I said, they probably will. And another big one, really the only other annoyance that I had with the truck in the entire week was the wireless charger in the center. Now, some people go back and forth saying that it works really well. Some people say it doesn't. I'm in the doesn't category. This thing, I mean, it just straight up sucks. In theory, seems great and I love the design of it. It just doesn't actually work. So you put your phone there and it wirelessly charges in the center console. But as soon as you start driving, it flops all around and just doesn't work. That I think needs some refinement. But like I said in the beginning, these very much feel like changes that will get addressed. They just haven't been in enough people's hands to really get back to the company and get fixed. That's really what it feels like. And I think, well, at least I'm confident that in the future, these things will be addressed. But even if they didn't change those things, this is still a truck that I think is 100% worth buying. And really what it comes down to is, can you trust Rivian as a company? Now, they definitely left a lot of people with a sour taste in their mouth when they raised the price in the way that they did. I understand needing to raise the price, but the way they went about it wasn't great. Luckily, they did seem to uh, rectify that in a good manner, but now the price is raised. So it's a more expensive truck, a lot more expensive than it used to be. And that move aside, I mean, this is still a new company. So you have to question whether it's gonna be around for the long haul, whether they will have the best service in the world, whether their adventure network for charging will actually get deployed. There's a lot of questions about how this truck will age. Now, I think it will do pretty well. I mean, the product itself is excellent and they hit it out of the park. And I think people that do get this truck and use it will absolutely love it. And that word is going to spread and I think it's gonna spread pretty quickly, but it's still a question and something that you may not wanna put money behind. But even with all of those questions, for me, this is a truck that I absolutely fell in love with. And once we gave the truck back to Rivian, I just kept replaying things in my mind, things I wanted to test it with, things I wanted to do. There's a lot to talk about with Rivian, both with their cars and as a company. But after a week with the R1T, I can say this. There is a very high likelihood, better chance than not, that one of these will be in my driveway sooner rather than later.